It's really interesting when you think about communicating and how you need to communicate either to staff or potentially to clients. So I want to take you through a quick four step process to close the gap between communicating and actually connecting. Because sometimes we believe that we're communicating well, but are we truly connecting with the other person? So let's go through the process and I've used a, a whole brain thinking process as well as neuroscience based training to help you identify and connect with somebody at a deeper level. So the first thing is focus. When you're communicating something, often we have a focus ourselves. For example, I had a client who was having to communicate a new strategy to the whole organization through her leadership team. And so her focus was on the strategy and where they were headed in the future. However, when you're communicating with someone, you need to be aware of what, where their focus is. If you have a room full of people sitting in front of you, what are they focused on? Have they come into work worried about their kids? Are they worried about the uncertainty of the organization or where they're headed? And if you're communicating to a potential client, where is their focus? You might be sharing something that you have to offer, but where is their focus? Where is their attention? Is their attention on the problem that they have or is their attention on the product that you're offering? So being aware of the focus of where somebody else is at is one of the key steps to be able to connect versus communicate. So number two is future. So again, in an organization, you may be speaking about the future and what you aspire to the organization to achieve. However, the people sitting in front of you may be thinking about their own future. So unless you connect the two and identify what are their aspirations, what are they excited about, how is their future going to look in the context of what you're changing? That is what's going to make them switch on and listen and be more connected to the path ahead that you are setting in front of them. If you are speaking to a potential client or a client, where is their future? You're thinking about the future for them of where it could be, but maybe they haven't yet got clarity about that future for themselves. So you need to be able to paint the picture for them. What is the next step for them? What is it that's going to make them feel inspired? What could they believe is possible? And the third piece is feeling. So you may be feeling a certain way when you're communicating something, and this could be that you're communicating through video, or you may be communicating through speaking or through training or through a team meeting. And you're probably very aware of how you're feeling when you're communicating. Most people fear public speaking more than they fear death, which means they'd rather be giving the eulogy than being in the coffin. So what is it that you're feeling? And notice your state, but are you aware of how everyone else is feeling in front of you or how they may be feeling? Maybe you're watching this and you're thinking, wow, like I'm a great communicator, but am I really connecting? So I'm asking you right now, how are you feeling about your communication? Do you feel present to what the other person is experiencing? And I guess that's the difference between communicating and connecting. When you're connecting, you're really present to what the other person is experiencing. And that old saying of seek first to understand before being understood is such a key because I see a lot of leaders in organizations and they may be really great communicators in that they're, they're very articulate or they may have a great idea or they may be trying to take an organization forward. However, there's a gap because they're missing that personal connection with the individuals that are sitting in front of them, being aware of how they're feeling in the process of communicating that change. And the fourth piece is function. So in function, I'm talking about the process of communication. One of the greatest things you can do is to be agile in your communication. What do I mean by agile? So being able to recognize and understand how the people in front of you are processing information. For example, I work with a lot of emotional high performers. They're usually future orientated. They're often very frustrated. And so when I start speaking to them, I talk a lot about the big picture first. Where are they headed? And then I, I really tune into how they're feeling. 
if I was just to come at them with facts, they would not resonate with that because they're typically more right brain. However, if you have people in front of you who are more data focused, who are more interested in numbers or measuring, you need to be agile in the way that you communicate with them. The other part of agile communication is recognizing body language. I recently had a client who was struggling a lot with communication and one of the things that was continuously happening, and I was aware of this as I was coaching this lady, was that she had her arms folded whenever she felt defensive or she felt uh, threatened in any way. So we started to work on her body language because she wasn't even aware that she was doing this. And as she started to shift the emotions internally, her body started to naturally relax. So being aware and observing how are other people, what is their body language like when you're communicating with them and what is your body language like when you're communicating. A third piece of agile communication is your voice tone. When I naturally get excited and passionate about something, my voice speeds up. I start to speak a little bit louder and I have more passion in my voice. But if I'm explaining something technical, I'm more inclined to speak a little bit more slowly and go through a process. And if I really want to challenge someone, I'm like in this zone. So how is your voice impacting the way that you're connecting with people? Being able to match your voice tone and recognize if somebody is a little bit quieter, they may feel intimidated if you're a very loud, energetic person. So you need to pull back and I always say it's take them by the hand and then lead them where you want to go with them. So you really want to be able to have the rapport instantly and a lot of that is all about agile communication and using all quadrants of your brain and recognizing how people are feeling, how they're processing, and have you really connected with them? How do you know if you've connected with them? When you walk out of a meeting or a phone conversation, if you are feeling energized and confident and positive, there's a good chance that they are as well. But if you walk out of any situation, maybe even an interview, you may be going for an interview. A lot of people feel nervous about interviews. And if you walk out of that interview and you start thinking about what that process was like, if you're energized, if you feel confident, there's a good chance that it went well and the people around you or the people that you're communicating with also felt that similar type of energy. So I hope that gives you some great tools. Love to chat to you if you need some help with connecting with your clients or with your team or with your leaders.